So we're now inside the B-Light aircraft, but that's not what we're looking at. We want to look at the panel. And that little teeny tiny panel, there's not a whole lot of square inches there, but there is a lot of information packed into that. This, you've had some beautiful light, uh, low energy use instruments that appear to work just magnificently, Jim. But we're looking at something different here than I've seen before. Yeah. What is this? Most of this is brand new stuff. Uh, what we wanted to do is to come out, first of all, customers drive what we do. I have a guy that says, you know, give me an airspeed indicator I can read. Three, you know, the three inch display, not big enough. Yeah. They want big. So this is the airspeed oh, indicator. Oh, well, you can't hardly miss Active that. length of over four inches. Yeah, and it's brilliant. Here we are in daylight, you know, it's just bright. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm practically got the sun in my eyes and I can see that easily. Yeah, so airspeed indicator, that's brand new. And then we built in the ability to do five or six instruments into this area right here. Just this, just this part just right here? Just this part here. Okay. So, air so speed, what all we got there? Turn coordinator, including, you know, uh, uh, yaw and roll are covered right here. Uh, then we added oil pressure and oil temps. <laughs> but you can, instead of this, you can, you can do vertical speed. In fact, you can do fuel gauge. So your pick of two or one big instrument right here. Uh, and then these are general purpose, just called it alarm. They hooked up to switches. I hooked up the first light to my uh, oil pressure on okay. the engine. All right. So, so you get a, you get an indicator light if you lost oil we pressure. We just that looked kind of thing. at the Amphib gear. These are going to be my three lights for the oh, Amphib okay. gear. Gear up, gear in down. Another airplane. Gear uh -huh. up, gear down. Okay. Exactly. So all that's happening in there. Oh, and here's an important one. Well, AOA. Angle of attack. Now it's interesting. I got to give you a segue on this here too because I heard uh, the folks at the GA Manufacturers Association say. You know, we'd like to have a regulatory change because the experimental guys get, can have AOA in their aircraft for only $800 and it costs us $8,000 when it's certified and it doesn't give them any more information. We need to change that. Somehow I'm guessing that you can be competitive with that. Yeah, we can. So tell us how that works. So, well, it's pretty simple. It's not mounted. This is a this is a dead indicator here. It's not mounted on this plane. Well, give us the but concept. all it is is a tiny little weather vane that mounts out on the wing. It's doing it the same way that the airliners have done it for years, which is to take a movable exactly. vein. Yep. And the reason that we could do that and do it well is because we found a magnetic indicator. So it's not sensing physical position, it's sensing the position of the magnet, it's on ball bearings, it's perfect. And what kind of money does that add, you know, when it's all done and everything, yeah. and you add it to this existing... Everything. The VSI, the turn coordinator, the airspeed, the alarms, the angle of attack, $1,500 for this box. <laughs> Everything. So, uh, GA guys, we feel your pain with the $8,000 for an AOA alone, and we wish you well guys. at getting it less expensively, oh, but look at what we can do. And we may be sitting in, a, in an ultralight, but we can calibrate this thing all the way up to about 175 knots. Is that right? And I got to tell you, when I'm putting this thing into a dive, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. It, it really does. So listen to that, Very RV high. guys, uh, yeah. with all of your airplanes that can go quite a bit faster than the Ultra Cub we're looking at here. Yeah. You can help yeah. them with that too. Okay, this wing is brand new too. This is a digital altimeter. Uh, let's set, here we go. We're going to set ourselves right to field elevation. Shows us what altitude we're at, and it's got like 10 features. I'm just going to show you two. Okay, good. Basic altitude, and I showed you it's foot sensitive, moving it up and down. I flick the button here, it's telling me, hey, watch out, we've got 2,500 feet of density altitude uh -huh. here in Central Florida. Uh -huh. well, yeah, so, we're, we're at about sea level, so yeah, that's we're a significant sea, number significant. that we're hearing about. So guys are, you know, they're thinking I'm at sea level, and the reality is, is DA is through the roof. So, and that's all in one little box. Um, and I want to explain your comment there go. about uh, what you said. Uh, Jim, how tall are you? I'm 6'2". Six 6'2". Two. Six two. So with your arm extended above your head, eight, eight with maybe 8 feet, feet something yeah. like that, you moved it from there down to the ground and then back up to about waist level and it showed in what looked like accurate numbers that's small. That's a fairly small amount of movement. An airplane climbing through the sky goes hundreds or thousands of yes. feet. This was a few feet and it was clearly showing those numbers and it showed them right away. Yes. It was extremely quick. Yes, it's it was. real time. The numbers almost changed as you moved it, or maybe they did change that fast. Yeah, no, it's it's sampling the pressure. I think thirty times a second. Wow. So it's what else have we got here on the panel, Jim? Well, uh, this one, this is as cool. It's a little harder to explain, but in a way, it's a revolution. This is just a plain old fuel gauge. Uh, okay. So fuel gauge, it's showing us zero percent, but 
uh, it doesn't matter. It shows anything from zero to 100%. The cool thing is, is that as it sees the fuel level, of course you get the fuel level, and then over time as you use the fuel level, it tells you how much time you have left Al, before your translates into time dry. for you. And you got a program for that first? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, All you got to do is tell tell the uh, instrument how big your tank is. Okay, that's, that's it, huh? And after tell, that it takes care of it. Yeah. So it calculates fuel flow and it calculates time remaining. Okay. So you don't have to tell it See, how much there, how fast you're burning fuel. We're sitting on the ground, we're using 0.0. .0. Okay. So you don't have to put in a fuel flow transducer, it figures it out. Excellent. Very now, cool. In order for this to work, the way it does is it looks at that fuel level, it averages over about a 15 minute period. But it's going to tell you, you know, you're going to see it, you're going to see your burn rate, you're going to see the tank going down, it's going to be telling you you got an hour and a half left to go. Great. It's another indication that you can use to be a safer pilot. Okay, well let's kind of wrap it up here a little yep. bit. Give me the ones on each side, and then I want to have uh, Dave take the camera around and show us the back of this little panel. Oh, yeah. Well, the stuff on the outside is stuff that we've had out for quite You've a while. You've had this before, the VSI. The VSI it's vertical just, speed it's indicator. Not okay. up. You can see it's running a dummy. Uh, it's running up and down. Running a demo program, okay. So this thing right here is a vertical speed. This is a small version of what you can get here. Ah, okay. This is our class. It's a great instrument. This you is got it available in sizes yep. then, okay. And great. then this one here, someone asked me, why do I have a G meter and a B light? And my answer was, because I have a hole to fill. <laughs> I put something there. Besides, they're fun to watch. Yeah. So I put this in, and it's exactly what it is. It shows plus or minus six Gs. It's been these two, these three instruments are our most popular instruments. Is that right? Across the broad product line. Cool. All available you know, commercial pitch from aircraft spruce or directly from us. Excellent. So this thing here is number one, and I'm not sure which one is number two. Well, let's have you hop out of the airplane okay. and let's look at the back of the panel just briefly. So we saw the front side, but I want to look at the back side. Look at this little tiny thing. First of all, there's no almost no physical volume to it, but here's the part that I'm enjoying looking at, if I can reach down in here and point with my thumb. That's the battery source. That's all it takes? That's all it takes. We can run the whole panel off of a 9-volt battery for about five hours. <laughs> is that right? So, even if you have to have another one in your pocket, this is like no big deal yeah, battery no weight-wise. Well, we do expect most pilots are going to run it off of their ship power. Sure, of course. But, but, if you're but you can power like the whole me. thing just with one 9-volt nine nine battery. Volt battery. That's remarkable. Yeah. Jim Weeby's done a lot of great work with his airplane, but also with instrument panel and keeping weight down and tech up. Yeah. And I think that's some great work. Thank We're you. We're speaking today with Jim Weeby, v Light Aircraft, v Light Electronics. I'm Dan Johnson. My website is bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. You can get links up to Jim's pages and where you can read his interesting blog about all things v Light. Thanks so much for visiting with us today. Thanks for coming along.